In, uh, in January, Vermont Interfaith Action conducted a house-to-house -house survey in the old North End of Burlington. Um, they found that there are three issues which people are most concerned about. Housing, recreational opportunities for teens, and public safety from drug dealers. Aside from housing, uh, which we've already discussed, what are your thoughts on these issues? Um, well, it's, it's funny. The fir one of the first things I ever got involved in in um, Barrie when I was in high school was the creation of a teen center. Um, and it really helped. Not only was I a teenager myself, but it's so important that teens um, and young people in our communities have places to go and hang out and to be you know, teenagers in safe environments. Um, and so I think the programs that exist between the after school programs in the, in the Burlington schools, but the Boys and Girls Club, which is just down the street from me, and King Street, those are really important um, centers for those, those um, uh, teens to be at. And I think the mentoring programs that have started to um, bubble up in the city, um, as well as um, um, getting the, the, the teens more engaged in different things that, that already happen in the city, those, those are things that the city should really support and help to foster. You know, it's always hard with nonprofits to fundraise their own money, so for us to really see this as part of the whole about investing in our future, if we invest in our kids, be it through the public school system, but also through these um, young people programs, I think that's the smart way to use those dollars, to make sure that they are engaged, that they are um, supported, and that, you know, that we are doing what we can to um, um, bring them into the community, rather than some communities who see them as a, not a liability, but, but as a problem that, ne that needs to be solved. I think the city should really do what it can to put more resources towards, towards those teens. Um, and public safety, you know, that's, that's an issue um, that always comes up in the old North End. Um, and I think around drug use in, in general, I've, I was excited to finally learn more about the community policing program that already exists in the Burlington Police Department. And I was really um, impressed with how accessible the department is um, from hearing with people's concerns. But they can't, you know, they, there's limitations to what they are able to do. And I think the real role that, um, that can really start to change at least the perception, if not the reality, of public safety around drug dealing in the Old North End is to go back to um, classic community organizing and some classic community um, um, development where we're really kind of coming together in more and more ways throughout the year as community so that we're looking out for each other and that we're really building kind of a strong sense of community that really will start to deter, um, you know, drug, drug trafficking, drug, drug behavior or other public safety issues that um, tend to sprout up when there's not a strong sense of community. If there is, you know, this, if each section of Ward 2 really started to come together either through potlucks or um, um, street parties or park parties or whatever, we start to meet each other more. We start to realize who lives in what, which houses and we start to kind of be able to really create a network that's able to respond so that um, if there's something going on that we have a way to connect with each other. Um, from Porch Forum's a great place, but the thing that breaks down there is, is real, a real sense of um, being able to put together a plan and bring people together to perhaps you know, create a log to help the Burlington police understand that there's a pattern going on in a particular neighborhood, that there's these multiple small things that may not warrant an investigation by the police department, but by the community kind of putting together a log, there might be a, you know, more evidence to move on from the police department to deal with a particular, you know, particular issue that's happening in, in a, a section of Ward 2. So it always comes back to community to me and uh, making sure that people are engaged because that means that um, people are watching out for each other. They're watching out for each other's safety. Um, and also there's places for people to bring their ideas. We're a very creative, um, thoughtful uh, community and I think there are simple things that people um, and great ideas that people can bring that could help us build a safer and um, higher quality neighborhood. So. As a member of the state committee of the Progressive Party, I've been working on the, uh, the platform committee. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a clause in the platform which uh, states that the Progressive Party is uh, uh, opposed to the uh, uh, failed war on drugs. Mm -hmm. Do you suppose that uh, by uh, legalizing uh, drugs, especially marijuana, uh, we could eliminate this, uh, this problem uh, that we have here right in our home north end? Uh, if there, there weren't the profit in, uh, in drugs, uh, it could be made a medical issue mm -hmm. and there wouldn't be, uh, people wouldn't be, have the incentive to create crimes and, 
Mm -hmm. it, it would make it much better for us, I think. I definitely think that some element of that would help ease off the, um, you know, the the incentive that there is, because it's all about profit making, and and then you you know throw money into there, and then it, it's a whole spiraling effect of people needing to figure out how to get more money to to serve addiction, and I think the more uh, dealing with also. Um, of a, supporting the population that does have the addiction problem to certain drug elements is also something that um, we need to do a better job at. I mean, when you look at um, um, the, the homeless population and the reasons why certain people are homeless and out of out of um, the um, out of can't use COT services or other services, addiction is often the a main reason, a, ma a main driver behind that. So I think there's there's multiple ways that we can. Um, ease that that pressure that kind of drives that whole um, that whole drug world, um, and I think legalizing um, marijuana is something that lots of other cities and and even states have looked into and have um, proven that it's really something that can help ease, you know, elements of of the uh, of of that whole world, you know, to really kind of stop at least parts of the cycle from from going forward, and you know, addiction is a real issue, and I think when you're in a um, uh, low-income uh, population area in general, it's, it's, you know, drugs in some ways can, is just a, a coping mechanism for the strain and the stress of, of, of um, people who are struggling just to meet basic needs. So I think we can't demonize our neighbors. We have to really look at what are the uh, greater factors that are, are encouraging people or moving people in that direction. And again, community building and helping people meet their basic needs and looking at services to help people um, with addiction are, are ways that can really help um, solve the problem rather than you know, increasing prison times and thinking that that's the way that's going to uh, really deter people. I don't think that's the way to do it at all. Well, Emma, we're running out of time. Okay. Uh, would you like to uh, give the viewers, uh, do you have a website, uh, your website mm -hmm. address mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and how they can contact you? Absolutely. My website's really easy. It's just emmaforcitycouncil.com. Um, people can also find me on Facebook. I have a, if people are Facebook savvy, they can message me. Um, I also have an email, which is just emma at emmaforcitycouncil.com. Um, and my phone number is 540-0185. That's my home number. Um, and I just wanted to just emphasize that, you know, the other main reason I'm, I'm running, I don't think I said this clearly in the beginning, is I really want to make sure Ward 2 continues to have a strong voice. We have an open seat. Um, so I want to make sure that we have a strong voice and also can, uh, I would hope to bring some new, young, fresh energy to the council who can really um, hear residents and bring issues right to the city council and make sure that um, the needs that are unique to Ward 2 are prioritized by the whole city um, and that we make sure that you know, a lot of the issues we talked about today um, are heard and, and addressed in a thoughtful manner that, um, that uh, Again, make sure that people in Ward 2's voices are valued just as much as the South Ends or the New North Ends. So I would love people to remember to vote March 3rd um, and, uh, and spread the word. That'd be great. Well, Emma, I wanted to thank you for coming. I'm certainly going to vote for you. <laughs> and I urge everyone to, to vote on March 3rd and to vote for Emma uh, mulvaney Senek. Great. Um, and to our viewers, thank you for joining us today. And um, after the election on uh, March 3rd, we'll return to our normal program schedule and uh, the second part of my interview with Mark Estrin. Uh, thank you again.